Let us take you on a journey. Take a seat, relax, and enjoy. This is The Breakdown. How valuable is my information? In the old days, in the analog world, oil was the most valuable commodity. Today, the digital age, the era of smartphones, selfies, and Twitter storms, data is the new oil. Think about the many things our phones do to keep track of certain things, our location, our movements, everything that we do. Through browsing the web, using apps, our devices, <laughs> they're collecting breadcrumbs all about you. What you're looking at, where you're at, what you like, what you don't like, even which famous dogs you follow on Instagram. To put this into perspective, here's how much data is collected globally per day. 500 million tweets are sent. 294 billion emails are sent. 4 petabytes of data are created on Facebook. 4 terabytes of data are created from each connected car. 65 billion messages are sent on WhatsApp. 5 billion searches are made. By 2025, it's estimated that 463 exabytes of data will be created each day globally. In short, we're creating, as organizations and individuals, a lot of data. You may be wondering where it's going. There's over 7,000 companies in some manner connected to the marketing tech space, and they exist because of access to that priceless commodity, your data. Your data is being sold to third-party marketing firms and every day it's getting easier and easier for marketers to know all about you. This helps them micro-target you. When was the last time you were followed around by a certain product online after searching for it once? Or even targeted by a product on Instagram? That is micro-targeting. And what might seem convenient leaves us more vulnerable than you might think. Your data is not just valuable to the marketers. It's valuable to criminals as well. Back in the day when there was a lot of money kept in banks, there were bank robbers who knew where the value was. So today we have big databases and there's bad guys out there who know the value of your data and want it. And just because the data is being collected from you in one place, it doesn't mean that's where it resides. So let me ask you, how much of your data do you think is out there? Your phone number could be out there, your web browsing habits, your address, your voice. You don't own it. It's the property of whoever you've given it over to, and you're putting a lot of trust in the people you're giving it over to. Just because somebody's a good guy today doesn't mean they're gonna be a good guy tomorrow. And while there's government legislation in place to try to protect our data, when we see the speed at which technology continues to evolve, and we think about the speed at which the average government department bureaucracy moves, there's a huge disconnect. By the time processes get to a place where the government says, hey, we need to create legislation to protect our citizens, they're potentially introducing some new legislation on a ship that's already sailed. Something new is already happening. Our government privacy commissioners can only do so much. It's down to you to revisit your privacy settings and consider how much information you're putting out online. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitter, Pinterest, Reddit, Airbnb, Uber, just to name a few. Aside from sucking up your data, what do all these services have in common? They're all free. So if you're using these free services, how are these companies making money? Think of it like this. If it's free, you're the product. So ask yourself, are you happy to be the product? Sorry if we scared you. If you want to know more about how to protect yourself online, check out our next episode. Comment to let us know what you thought about this episode. If you want to see more videos, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification icon to stay in the mix. Thanks for watching.